with the get down. Man, I love me some James Brown. Hey, Mayberry. I'm going to put you on the spot right quick. Say it loud. Say it loud. <laughs> oh, hey, I, I, hey, if you'd have said it, I would have backed you up. At 100%. 100%. I love it. I love it. All right. <laughs> that was unfair. But that's a joke that I can only do with you, and I love it. It's great. All right. So I want to talk a little bit about Wisconsin football, but I also want to acknowledge Chuba Hubbard put out a statement earlier this morning that is lengthy, and I had it pulled up, and now it is gone. I hate this. See, it's, this is what happens when you're producing the show. I, dude, seriously, though, like, because I was so ready for this, and then it's gone. All right, got it. He put a statement out about 50 minutes ago. It says, I just want to thank or excuse me, I just want to say thank you to everyone for the support. I will start by saying this. I was never wrong for saying what I said. I am a man and I realized I should have went to him, him being Gundy, as a man, face to face rather than on Twitter. That's my opinion. But I had to hold him accountable either way. I am glad things happened the way they did because things are being changed as we speak. If anyone knows me, they know I am a very passionate person. I care about my family, friends, teammates, and people. I don't even know. I spoke out because I am emotionally drained, and I'm tired of seeing stuff happening without results or consequences. I realize I have a platform to generate change, and I am trying my best to use it accordingly. I am a young black man that wants change. I want change that will bring a better experience for my black brothers and sisters at Oklahoma State. It's that simple. Over these next few months I have left at Oklahoma State, I will be working every day, all caps, to bring change to this organization and to the world. I will be supported by my teammates along with people within this organization. To everyone else, trust me when I say that good will come from this. Chuba. Eloquent. Very well put. And we'll see what change looks like. Because I feel like I'm, I'm, I'm reading a, a political slogan there for just a second. Because change is in there a lot without saying exactly what is changing and what exactly detail is going to happen at Oklahoma State. And to that end, what had been happening at Oklahoma State? What does Gundy actually need to be held accountable for in a very specific way? Now, those conversations probably aren't for public. But they certainly are for the athletic department, and they certainly are for Mike Holder to try to put together some sort of investigatory tool and arm to go find out what those things are. Okay. All right. From that to this, Wisconsin is next in our series of what coaches anonymously said about name brand football programs that we care about. We care about Wisconsin because they made the Big Ten championship game last year with Jonathan Taylor at tailback, and at least for just a second, looked like giving Ohio State more than a little bit of a game, right? This is with Chase Young on the defense, Jeff Kuda on at defense back, Sean Wade at defense back, Malik Harrison, Malik, uh, uh, yeah, my goodness, Jonathan Cooper, and on it goes. It was a stacked defense, and Wisconsin continued to be like, no, we're Wisconsin. We run the ball, we play defense. That's what we do. And it looks like that's what they're shaping up to do again this year after coming off a 10 and 4 season, 7 and 2 in the conference. And again, falling 34 21, December 7th, Pearl Harbor Day. My, my, my parents' anniversary to the Ohio State Buckeyes. Shout out to my parents who have been married for like 36 years in December. My goodness. All right. They lose Jonathan Taylor, okay, after they took the loss to Wisconsin 28 27 in the Rose Bowl. And Jonathan Taylor is no small thing. 41 games at Wisconsin, 926 carries, 6,174 yards, 6.7 yards per carry average. Yo, 42 catches, 407 yards, 9.7 yards per catch average, five tutties to go there. My goodness. You're, talk, you're talking about a workhorse of workhorses. At a school that produces top-notch NFL tailback after top-notch NFL tailback, Jonathan Taylor's probably the best to do it. I mean that. 
including Rondane. Just looking at what he's done. He just if Jonathan Taylor plays in the same time Rondane does, we're not talking about Rondane. We're talking about Jonathan Taylor winning the Heisman. Okay? It's just that hard. So to that end, a coach anonymously said they lost Jonathan Taylor, and then there's another guy coming in behind him. Everyone in the league assumes they're going to produce a certain quality running back. And we assume there's going to be a big physical line that plays really well blocking for them. They're losing some studs on that line, but development of their front is a given. And I tend to go along with this as well. I don't worry about whether or not Wisconsin's going to be able to run the football or play defense for that matter, because Jim Leonard just knows how to do this. Right. In the same way that Brent Venables knows how to do this in the same way that Jeremy Pruitt knew how to do this. Kirby Smart knows how to do this. Jim Leonard knows how to do this. What I worry about is Wisconsin being another version of Georgia, which is to say they want to play murder ball and defense. And if you fall behind by more than two touchdowns, you can't play murder ball anymore. You got to open up. You got to throw the ball down the field. And what we found was Quintez Cephas wasn't the threat that y'all needed him to be, which leads me to the quarterback controversy that I hope happens because I believe in Graham Mertz or excuse me, Graham Mertz. And I don't necessarily believe in Jack Cohen, even as Jack Cohen started all 14 games for Wisconsin last year and completed 69.6% of his passes for 2,700 yards, 18 tutties, five picks. I think Graham Mertz is a better quarterback. And, you know, it's interesting to see what this coach said anonymously about their quarterback position. Cohen is a solid guy. Cohen. Cohen is a solid guy. Typical Wisconsin quarterback. He's never in a situation where he's pressed too much. They work well on getting him in play action. They're not looking to do anything different this year. It's really about how well they can execute on their system. They're probably the most steady program in the league, them in Iowa. They identify their talent and go out and sell their culture. This is also the point where I get to bring up, look, the defense gave up 16.1 points per game. 16.1. They're really, really good. 293 yards per game. That's seventh best in the country. Okay, Fourth year for Jim Leonard now. And, you know, everybody understands what Paul Chris has over there. As Chris said, you have to put in the work at every position has to elevate. As coaches, we have to continue to elevate. I think we have to keep working to make each position better. I think we have some guys that are capable of helping us and becoming a really good team. And you have to keep working and building it. It's also very Paul Chris to go out with that sort of statement. Because when Jack Cohen won the job last year, at this time when we're all figuring out who wins what job, <laughs> it's like, so Jack, how'd you find out that you uh, became the starting quarterback for Wisconsin? Uh, Coach Chris told me. He just told you, and then what'd you do? I went to practice. <laughs> like, that's, that's Wisconsin. They, they don't do for pump. They don't do for circumstance. They just want to go out and play ball. And I understand for a traditionalist, that's exactly what you want to hear. But in the Big Ten West, it's really them in Minnesota this year. And I will be shocked if Iowa is good, especially with Chris Doyle out the door, who's been there about as long as Kirk Ferentz has, right? with the changing of a guard at quarterback and losing Tristan Wirfs. So Nebraska – Maybe you got a shot. Oh, yeah, that's right. Jeff Brom's still at Purdue and Rondell Moore's healthy again. Maybe you don't have a shot. Like, it's just, ugh. The Big Ten West is already kind of nasty to look at. And then when you look at it for real, you're going, okay, so this is really just Wisconsin's division. And there's nothing to say that it can't be. In the same way that the SEC East is Georgia's division, you know, and Florida is to the SEC East, what Minnesota is to the Big Ten West division. I think we all can get that. You know, I think we all can get there. I'm going to be interested to see if they want to open up the pass game just a little bit more, though, especially with Jalen Berger coming in as a, a true freshman four-star recruit out of New Jersey and Don Bosco prep. They can just play. I also would add in here, because I love this, you know who got a Wisconsin offer at running back in the 2020 class? In the Tulsa Metro, this kiddo in the TPS school system by the name of Sabian Morrison. If you didn't believe in Sabian before, believe in Sabian now. I can't wait to see what he looks like in Scott Frost's backfield. And you know what? 
He might get more opportunities, one, because Marcus Washington's gone, and two, J.D. Spielman ain't there yet. Now, Frost expects him to show up, but I don't. Kid wants to transfer. And knowing that he is the nephew of Chris Spielman and the son of Rick Spielman, I'm interested to see how this goes, right? I'm, re I'm really interested to see how this goes. If they try to get him to go back to Nebraska or the kid just decides that he wants to be like his uncle and go to Ohio State and finish out. And whether or not he makes it onto the football field, I think is a foregone conclusion. I, gen I genuinely believe J.D. Spielman is one of the best wide receivers in the Big Ten and that Ohio State would be happy to get him if that's what he decided to do.